go there in half an hour, and it's fine if they see it, but... I don't know, should I just make a comment in the... <laughs> at the bottom, going, yeah, sorry, uh, technical difficulties, go to this link instead? Uh, uh sorry, uh... uh... But do you know what? So this the current stream. I don't know how to get the link. You got the link last time. How did you do that? Oh, you click the share button. Hey. Mm. Okay. So I think this new link that I'm going to send to you now is mm. going to be the one that we go with. Okay. Um. Because. And there's absolutely no way to get the original one back. Like that. No. It, I, I can't see a way and we running out of time, out of time. <laughs> so you know it may be that there is a way but I I don't think it's going to be worth figuring it out right now um, right but if we don't figure it out then I guess I'm like I mean it's not just like I send to my 60 people it's I send to them and yeah. then they have to send to their kids hi Luiso hi hello hi how are you doing? Okay, okay, and yeah. you? Thanks, guys, cool, for cool. joining uh -huh. and going to talk. Um, yeah, it, it looks like we're going to have to give them a new stream link because we can't figure out how to use the old one. Um,
Hi, Hi. Betsy. Hi.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's now half past five, so I think it's time for us to start this incredibly exciting evening. It's very interesting to be doing this um, via, via streaming and via Zoom and, well, via um, Google Chat. But welcome, welcome to the third BITS Maths competition. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's so exciting it's to have you guys all here. Yeah. So I think it's and we look forward to a wonderful it's evening. Really exciting. So before we do anything else, I'd just like to pass on to Jonathan, um, who's going to present our first speaker and introduce him. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Hey, thanks, Celeste. Um, so we have two very accomplished um, speakers today. The first one is Luiso Nongsa. I hope I pronounced that right. Luiso was South Africa's first Black Road scholar. He went to Oxford to do a PhD in pure mathematics. Um, he's a former vice chancellor of WITS, which is like, you know, being the head of it. It's like a school principal, um, but at the university level, which is huge. He's currently the vice president of the IMU, which is the largest um, body of professional mathematicians in the world. Um, we asked him about naming an award after him, and he very politely declined. Um, but I really got the impression that the reason was, well, if we let everyone who was going to name an award after, who wanted to name an award after Lisa do so, things would just get confusing very quickly. Um, I'm joking a little bit there, but really not very much. Um, and yeah, please welcome our first speaker, Luiso Nongsa. Can you hear me? You can. Um, good, good evening, everybody. I, uh, I'm, I'm very glad to be here. Uh, I um, have had a chat with Jonathan a few years ago about initiatives like this and how they can contribute to lifting the standard of mathematics and exciting people about mathematics. And it was something that um, I found encouraging. Um, I'm not used to these different platforms of uh, presenting. I, I had prepared a just a single slide with a list of questions, but this is the first time that I'm using this particular platform. But be that as it may, I mean, it was just to put that on the screen as a kind of three or four topics or questions that I would like to, to pose that people can think about today, tomorrow, going forward, and... Uh, it's my own personal perspective on mathematics. And I continue to think about these things, about the nature of mathematics. The first question would be, what is mathematics? And, and quickly to say that um, there's no single answer to that. Um, there, there are many different answers. In fact, there is a senior professor at University of Cape Town. He's an A-rated uh, mathematician, which means that he's regarded as one of the leaders in the whole world in mathematics. He grew up and studied in Georgia. And he and I, because of mathematics, have lots of things to talk about. So we, we decided to work on a problem or a project really about telling the world about South African mathematical sciences research. And this was about four or five months ago. We still haven't moved beyond that because he and I cannot agree on what to include in that discussion and what to exclude. So basically you have two people, both of them have been doing mathematics all their lives and, and they can't come to an agreement about what should we include in discussion about mathematics? I mean, he feels, for instance, that at the University of Cape Town, 
uh, applied mathematics should not be in the same department as, as what he does. He feels that people in astronomy should go to physics and so on. But one of the things that uh, I find amusing and at the same time annoying when I tell people that I'm, I'm a mathematician, that's my identity. And, and you'd be, let's say, in a, um, socializing with people, people that you don't know, and they say, oh, you are one of the clever ones. I was hopeless in mathematics. I find it strange that people can proudly declare that they were hopeless in mathematics. And think about what would they say if I say that my English is atrocious. I would be, they would look down on me because basically if your English and grammar is not that good and you look like me, people don't take you seriously. So there's this view about mathematics that people do mathematics somehow there's something that is strange about them. Is mathematics a cultural activity? Some people describe it as that way. In fact, when I was growing up, which was a long, long, long time ago, when black people still were not allowed to vote, the prime minister then had a policy that the fewer black schools that offer mathematics, the better. Because he felt that certain groupings in South Africa, in this case, people like myself, they really had no use for mathematics. In fact, there is a thing he says, what is the even for instance, for people working in or talking about the history of mathematics, there would be contestations and debates about uh, Western mathematics versus Eastern mathematics. Uh, there was a time uh, in uh, South Africa or even in Africa when people were talking about ethnomathematics, which was the mathematics that was embedded in cultural symbols uh, that you find in African societies. Third question would be whether mathematics is a language. At least there, the answer is yes. Mathematics is a language on its own. Many years ago, when I was a student at Oxford, um, sitting around the table with one guy from the US, and, and he said that th there are similarities between mathematics as language and Chinese and structure and so on. And, and uh, in fact, uh, when people talk about the impact of language in mathematics and therefore understanding mathematics, is that people will talk about um, a space. Now, a space in the English language does not mean the same thing as a space in mathematics. Because in mathematics, you can talk about a vector space or, I mean, as a mathematical entity. So you, you then have mathematics being a language in its own right because you, you, you have a vocabulary. It has its own vocabulary. And then you, you put together its vocabulary to form sentences. And these sentences are either true or false. And, and those are your theorems, Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem is a mathematical statement. It's stated in English, but it means a particular thing in mathematics. Recently, maybe in the last six months or a year, in fact, this question was posted on one of the many WhatsApp groups that I belong to. And I, I tend to sometimes when I'm really, really bored and I need something to amuse me, I Google YouTube uh, videos on mathematics and I just look at something and then something comes out. And, and there, there are a series of videos and, and I, can, I would encourage you to have a look at them. The, and the question is, is mathematics discovered or is it invented? Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, the fact that the theorem of Pythagoras is true 
Okay? There was a time maybe when people did not know that it holds. But the fact that they didn't know that it holds does not mean that it was not true. So the theorem of Pythagoras has always been true, even before people became aware of that. And therefore, it was discovered that uh, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared in a right angle triangle, something like that. So it's, it's, it's a truth that exists independent of anything. And people invent some mathematical methodologies to be able to discover this truth about the real world. In fact, this thing, I'm going to digress a little bit. Uh, one of the things I love about mathematics is that people say that mathematical truths are the closest you can get to anything that is true in terms of the creator. Okay? So if, if the truest statements that you can find in life are mathematical statements, because they don't change whatever your beliefs are, whether you live in Southern Africa or in China or so on, those things still hold. Coming back then to this question about whether mathematics is discovered or invented, and I gave an example where people would argue that mathematics, in fact, is out there. It exists independent of our intellectual abilities. But at the same time, in doing mathematics, you have to invent certain processes and procedures. The question whether the last theorem of Fermat's last theorem was true or not, okay? This, this question was posed, I, my history is not that great, but maybe in the 1600s. And people did not know whether it was true or false, okay? But Andrew Wiles, in the early 90s, invented methods and put together procedures which nobody else had deployed before, which he was, these were mathematical methods, which then he was able to deploy to establish an existing truth. So he invented mathematics in order to discover mathematics. So the answer to that question, as far as I'm concerned, and that is not necessarily the right answer, is that mathematics is both discovered and invented. So with those few words, I mean, these are things that I, 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 I do reflect on these questions uh, from time to time, because I believe that in just reflecting on them, we're not looking for correct answers. They will probably improve how we communicate to others about the nature of mathematics and how we teach students what, what is the nature of mathematics. And maybe it might lead to a better understanding on how people who do mathematics approach that they do. Thank you very much and I wish you well and congratulations to all the winners of the, of the prizes. Well done for this wonderful initiative. Thanks. Thank, uh, thank you, Afnang, sir. Um, our next speaker is um, Stephen Landsberg. He's a professor of economics at the University of Rochester. He um, comes from a math background originally, having done a PhD at the University of Chicago. He's also a author and blogger. I think his first couple of books were um, from putting together a bunch of articles and sticking them together. And he's always sort of a very interesting person to talk to. <coughs> um, you'll read an article that starts with something in economics and then jumps to philosophy, then jumps back to mathematics. And you can always sort of see the maths coming through. Um, and, you know, most times when you're discussing anything with him, it, you know, people end up developing models and really analyzing them. And it's a very intellectually stimulating experience. Um, it's also one of the few people who I think is... I have no idea whether you can hear me, but I can oh, hear you. Sorry. Um, sorry. Um, 
Prof. Lansberg, can you hear us? Sorry, guys, I think we might be experiencing technical difficulty. I can hear you, Prof. Sorry, we are experiencing some technical difficulty for a moment. Um, <laughs> let me maybe um, Sorry guys, please to be with us. Um, Um, perhaps what we should do is do some of the prizes and perhaps the technical virtual will be sorted yeah. after that. I think that's probably best. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so it's going to let him know. So that's yeah. I think the issue is he can't hear us, so we have to chat to him. Yeah. Um. How about now? Yeah, that I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me now? Okay. I can. I still cannot hear you. Um, okay. Uh, I think as long as the people listening to us can. Um, I think maybe I'll just watch the chat and you can let me know when to start talking. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Okay, um, sorry guys, we had a little bit of a glitch there. Um, we still have 130 people watching, so I think I can proceed. Um, so our next speaker is Professor Landsberg, who is a professor of economics at the University of Rochester. Comes from a math background, having been a PhD student at the University of Chicago. Um, he's also a very popular author and blogger. And if you go to his blog and have discussions with him and the rest of the commenters, you'll, it's the most intellectually okay. stimulating kind of discussion you ever have. Yes. Um, people disagree on things, they pull out models and um, it's just really, really stimulating. Um, and his books will sort of jump from economics to philosophy and then to math and um, yeah, he is also someone who I think would you know, is one of the few people I know are capable of delivering a math talk, which is going to be interesting to both our grade four and five winners and our university level winners simultaneously. So that said, um, yeah, 
I'd say please welcome if we were live, but we can't hear the audience. So I guess here's Stephen Landsberg and I'll be quiet. Um. Congratulations. Uh, in fact, I want to congratulate you twice. First, because you're good at math. You just won a contest and that's all. Pardon? But second, I yeah. want to congratulate you because you entered that contest in the yeah. first place, which tells me that you probably enjoy math. And that means you've got some extraordinary opportunities ahead. If you want to, you can build your life around mathematics. One way to do that, not the only way, but a good way, is to be a mathematician working at a research institute or a university. That means you get to spend every day solving cool math problems, not problems that somebody else assigned you, but problems that you chose to work on or even problems you invented for yourself. Or instead of solving problems, you can spend your days inventing new mathematical concepts, like the person who invented negative numbers. There was a first-class research mathematician. So was the person who invented decimal points or the people who invented algebra. There's still a lot more to do. There is an infinite amount of mathematics still waiting to be invented and discovered and new mathematics is invented and discovered every day by people who feel like they are part of a great adventure. And it's an adventure you can be a part of. Like all the best adventures, it's exciting. But even better than that, it's an adventure with a purpose because doing mathematics makes the world a better place. Somebody invented negative numbers, that made it possible for somebody else to invent banks. Or Here's another example. Many years ago, some mathematicians got to thinking about knots, the kind of knots that you tie in string. And they asked this question. Suppose I show you a picture of a tangled bunch of string. And I ask you what would happen if you pulled on both ends of that string. Would all the tangles come out or would it end up forming a knot? What calculation can you do to predict the answer. Well, to solve that question, they had to invent a whole lot of new kinds of mathematics. And their inventions taken together came to be called knot theory. They studied knot theory for one reason, because they thought it was fun. But it also turned out to be useful because many years later, biologists discovered that they really needed to study tangled up strands of DNA and tangled up proteins, and they needed to know what kind of knots could form. Fortunately, the knot theorists already had the answers. Or here's another example. Over a century ago, some mathematicians got very concerned about whether we could really trust the rules that we use when we manipulate numbers and equations. Those rules seem pretty solid, but what if they're not? What if they sometimes allow us to prove things that aren't even true? What if there's some way to use the, the what we think are legitimate rules of, of math, use all our ordinary rules and end up proving something like zero equals one? Well, that would be very disturbing. And these people were concerned enough about that that they decided to try to prove that it can't happen. They wanted to prove that things like zero equals one can't be proved. Well, if you wanna prove that some things can't be proved, the first thing you need is a very precise definition of what a proof is in the first place. And it took them a while to invent that definition. But what they eventually came up with was this. A proof is a series of statements where each one follows from the others using rules that are so simple that even a mindless computer could be trained to follow those rules. That was a pretty clever idea. It was especially clever because at the time there was no such thing as a computer. They had to invent imaginary computers in order to talk about what they meant by proofs. And then they started proving things about those imaginary computers. One thing they proved was that some computers can be programmed to imitate any other computer. Now, quite a while later, 
people started building actual real computers. But the first computers were very stupid. All they could do was add. If you wanted them to multiply, you had to go around to the back of the computer, pull out a bunch of wires, and reconnect those wires a different way. And now you had a computer that could only multiply. If you wanted it to add again, you had to go around back and put the wires back. But before long, someone realized that the mathematicians had been thinking about computers long before anybody had ever built one. And they had figured out that you can program one computer to imitate another, and they had figured out how to do it. So with that as an inspiration, people started building real-world computers that could be programmed to imitate both the adding computer and the multiplying computer and any other kind of computer you wanted. And that led directly to the computer that you're using to watch this talk today. Once again, the mathematicians study things they think are interesting, and then those things keep turning out to be useful. One last example. Several years ago, some mathematicians working on some problems in geometry discovered that a particular number kept popping up in very important ways. And that number was 196,883. It turned out to be a very important number for various reasons. But meanwhile, other mathematicians working on completely different problems, other mathematicians who were trying to figure out what are all the different ways in which an object can be symmetric. And they realized that the answer is different in different dimensions. It's different in two dimensions, three dimensions, four dimensions, five dimensions. They discovered there was a dimension in which suddenly spectacular new kinds of symmetries were, were possible that weren't possible in any other dimension. And that dimension was not 196,884. They were forced to think about spaces with 196,884 dimensions, one more than that 196,883 that the geometers had stumbled on in a completely different context. Now, maybe that was just a coincidence but they had to think maybe something deeper was going on. Maybe what this meant somehow was that all of the math that one group was doing and all the math that the other group was doing, even though it looked completely different, maybe they were disguised versions of each other somehow. And that was a great mystery. And a lot of people thought very hard about it for a very long time. And eventually they figured out that it was not a coincidence. In fact, there was a missing link and the missing link came of all places from theoretical physics, that the two completely different areas of math were linked to each other and were showing the same numbers because they were both related to physics in ways that nobody had suspected. And in figuring all that out, they figured out a whole lot of new math that suddenly the physicists could use. Nobody was thinking about physics when they started thinking about this stuff, but that didn't stop their discoveries from being useful to the physicists. Mathematicians play with ideas, and then those ideas turn out to be useful and amazing in amazing and unexpected ways. Why? Well, I'm not sure, but I think it's because at bottom, all knowledge is really, math, or at least all scientific knowledge is really mathematical knowledge. If you want to understand psychology, for example, pretty soon you discover that you need some understanding of how the brain is put together, which means you have to understand some anatomy, which means in turn that you have to understand some biology. And then you can't really understand the biology until you understand some chemistry. And then you can't understand the chemistry until you understand some physics, and you can't understand the physics until you understand some. Mathematics is the only subject that stands on its own two feet. All intellectual roads lead to mathematics. That, in turn, is related to the fact that mathematics is the only subject that has to be true. Biology is about the way that organisms on Earth just happened to evolve. 
I think it's very likely that the laws of physics in our universe are accidental in exactly the same way. But math is the one subject where there are no accidents. The number 317 is prime because it must be prime, and that would be true even if humans had never evolved. It would be true even if the Earth had never formed. It would be true even if the universe itself did not exist. Math is the most fundamental thing there is. So if you devote your life to math, you get to think about the most fundamental thing there is. You're also likely to be a pretty useful member of society and icing on the cake, you're likely to lead a pretty easy life. Most mathematicians have jobs where they set their own hours and even where there's no pandemic, they can work in comfortable clothes. And far more importantly, a life in math is a lifelong adventure. It's a reason to get up in the morning. A lot of people in this world, a lot of people in this world wake up every morning of their lives and dread going to work. But most mathematicians can't wait to get to work because they're working on projects they chose to work on, making amazing discoveries and knowing that they're part of something much bigger than themselves. Of course, not everybody works the same way. Do you like sitting in a room by yourself, plugging away at ideas? As a mathematician, you can do that. Or would you rather be part of a team, swapping ideas all day long, putting your minds together in the great spirit of cooperation? You can work that way too. Do you like competition? Work on problems you know other people are working on. Try to solve them first. Do you hate competition? Work on different problems. Do you go through phases where sometimes you like to be alone, other times you like to work with others, other times you like to compete, other times you don't? Great. Every day you get up and you work on whatever you want to work on and you work on it however you want to work on it. Of course, not all mathematicians work in research institutes and universities. Because their ideas are so useful, some of them find jobs at software companies or banks or governments. The inventory management. They help to design better auction rules to ensure that merchandise ends up with buyers who will make the best use of it. Now, even if you work entirely outside mathematics, even if you become a plumber or a doctor or a lawyer or an entrepreneur, your mathematical skills are gonna serve you well because mathematical skills are thinking skills. But before you choose, please make sure to be well informed about what your options are. A tragic number of our best math students never pursue careers in pure math just because they don't realize that those careers are available. If you do pursue a career in math, I hope that someday, five or 10 or even 20 years from now, you'll drop me an email and let me know how it's going. Because mathematicians form a community and we care about each other. In fact, that's one of the things I love most about math. Mathematicians from all over the world, from different cultures, speaking different languages, with very different values, very different politics, are all united in caring about mathematics and helping each other push out the boundaries of human knowledge. Your life is going to be an amazing journey. Congratulations again, and bon voyage. Thank you so much, Prof. That was that was very special. I myself am a theoretical physicist, so um, yeah, it was yeah. Uh, all the moonshine and the monster groups and all that kind of stuff. I think I've got so much to wrap my head around, and I'd love to to understand it better. But thank you so much for being able to come and speak to to all of these budding young mathematicians and all the fun that they're going to have because really it is fun. That should drive one to do all of this stuff. Well, it's time that you've all been waiting for. It's the time for some prizes to be read out. So let's have a look. Um, John, would you like me to share my screen or shall I just read through the... I think probably screen share is better. Okay. Um, we've got... Uh, sorry, guys, if you're an individual winner, you have to wait through this and um, before you hear where you came. 
All right. There we go. Let me know when you can see my screen, please, John. I can see. Okay, screen. perfect. And that's so I'm not so familiar with this particular way of doing it. All right, let's let's just start. So welcome once again to the award ceremony of the 2020 Bits Maths competition. We're so excited. This is our third year um, doing this competition. And I must say, the, the quality is going up every single year. Cool. Can you hear me? All right. Sorry about that. All right. So without anything else to do, let's have a look at the winning schools. So in the middle primary category, we have a notable Quintel 2 school, and that's Mautsui Primary School. Well done. So for those of you who don't understand the Quintel system, Quintel 2 means that you are between 20 and 40 percent um, in terms of the poorest um, schools. So to have these schools participating, we are incredibly encouraged. Um, and it's amazing the effort that you guys have put in. So congratulations. Then in 10th place, um, for Gauteng, we've got St. Catherine's Primary School in 10th overall. And 9th place, we've got Gauteng, so we've got Sacred Heart. Right, in 8th place, Gauteng, and 9th overall, we've got King David Sanson. In 8th overall place, we've got Orient Islamic School. Corporate Primary Pretoria. In sixth place in Gauteng and sixth overall Gauteng and fifth overall, we've got King David Victory Park. Then in fourth place in Gauteng and fourth overall, we've got King David Linksfield. In third place, Gauteng and third overall, we've got St. John's Prep. In second place, Gauteng and second overall, we've got Red Hill. So we've got a new um, a new leader coming to the party. And in first place, we've got large school Tiger Poet. First in Gauteng and first overall. So congratulations to the top 10 um, in South Africa and Gauteng for the middle primary. Over to you, John. Thanks, Sal, um, Celeste. Um, yeah, so maybe a couple of words there. Um, so this, our government, the South African one, splits public schools into five quintiles based on how well resourced they are, the lowest being quintile one, then two, three, four, and five. Um, in case it wasn't clear, you know, we give out awards for schools in that category that perform particularly well. Um, and we're very impressed simply to have schools uh, with those resources participating in a pandemic. Um, I'm now going to award, you know, read the awards for the upper primary winners. Um, they are um, middle primary is grades four and five. Upper primary is grades six and seven. And what's perhaps worth noticing, um, isn't um, sorry, I'm not sure if my screen is being displayed. Um, so can you um, turn on your screen, please? Okay, I've I've stopped sharing. Would you like to try share again? Or... Okay, I suppose that's how to do it. Sorry, guys. Uh, this is um, yeah. And present. Okay, so the upper primary. Um, ninth place in Hauteng, Law School Tigerport from Pretoria, two very high achievers in the upper primary, or in the middle primary as well. Crawford Primary Pretoria in eighth place in Hauteng. 
In seventh place in Hauteng, King David Victory Park. Makwabi Primary came 10th overall and was a notable quintile two school. So hats off to them. I think they had sort of eight or nine finalists who all did really well and yeah, really hats off. Panorama Primary School from Cape Town placed ninth overall. Cannons Creek Independent School is an eighth overall. King David Santon is in sixth place in Hauteng and seventh overall. Um, St. John's Prep, fifth in Hauteng, sixth overall. <coughs> De La Salle Holy Cross College, uh, fourth in Hauteng and fifth overall. King David Linksfield Primary School, third in Hauteng and fourth overall. St. Cillian's Boys Prep, second Hauteng, third overall. Trinity House Rand Park Ridge, first in Hauteng, second overall. And Sweet Valley Primary from Cape Town came first overall. They're always a top performer in the South African Mathematical Challenge as well. Congrats to everyone. And yeah. Thanks, John. Please keep sharing your screen because it looks far nicer when you share it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, yeah. Um, are you going to read or should I? Could, okay. I'll read, but could you just share your screen again? That was very nice. Oh, I thought I was still sharing. Sorry. Um, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. Uh, I, I promise, well, hopefully next year we don't have to do this online, but maybe we will anyway for people who are far away. And we all keep uh, it safe, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll get better at this if we get to do it again. Um, All right, so let's go on to the Junior okay. Secondary Awards. So a notable Quintile One school. This is in particular a very, very special achievement. Um, so to Tikolo, to Tokelo, sorry, Secondary School, congratulations. The next Alexander Christian Academy, they can attend in Gauteng. Then, ninth in Gauteng Yeshiva College, congratulations. Then in eighth place Gauteng, Trinity House Rand Park Ridge. Seventh place in Gauteng, Horizon International High School. Then in sixth place Gauteng, we had Beaulieu College. Then fifth place Gauteng, we've got Jackie Boys High School. Fourth place in Gauteng, we've got Sacred Hearts. Then, 10th overall. So this is where all of the, the rest of the provinces in South Africa start coming to the fore. We've got Rondebosch Boys High School. Then, in third place, Gauteng and ninth overall. Well done to King David Linksfield for coming top 10 overall. That's great. Then in eighth place overall, we've got Pearson High School. Then in second place in Gauteng and seventh overall, we've got Red Hill School. Sixth place overall, we've got Redham House, Durbanville. Fifth place overall, we've got Bishops and Bishops also does very well in these competitions. Fourth place overall, we've got Jan van Riebeek High School. Congratulations. Then in third place overall, we've got South African College High School. In second place overall, well done to Herschel Girls High School. That is fantastic. Well done, girls. And then in first place overall and first in Gauteng. Congratulations, Susan Jobs College. Well done. That is absolutely fantastic. Good stuff. <laughs> um, am I, ah, okay, I can still be heard, so I think I'm just going to move on to the senior secondary. Um, junior secondary is gr grades 8 and 9, um, senior secondary is grades 10, 11 and 12. 
um, I should say, you know, when we started the competition, it was sort of just trying to be in the Hauteng area. And we've now expanded to anyone from Africa can enter. I think we had a Botswana school enter, but not actually end up participating this year. Um, so to try and, you know, um, build a culture of internal competition in Hauteng, we've also made um, Hauteng Pacific Awards. Okay, so senior secondary, uh, and I apologize if I mispronounced this, Quidditch were secondary school. Um, it's a notable quintile two school, congrats. 10th place in Hauteng, Northcliffe High School. 9th in Hauteng, Red Hill School. Crawford College Lone Hill in 8th in Hauteng. And Horizon International, 7th in Hauteng. St. Catherine's Convent, 6th in Hauteng. And St. Scythian's Girls College is 5th in Hauteng. Um, King David Victory Park, 4th in Hauteng and 10th overall. We're getting into our overall winners now. Uh, Herschel Girls School, ninth overall. The American International School of Johannesburg, third in Hauteng and eighth overall. Stellenberg High School, seventh overall. Somerset College, sixth overall. Bishops in fifth. Crawford College, La Lucia from Natal, fourth overall. Crawford College Pretoria, second in Hauteng and third overall. O'Connor House from Cape Town, uh, second overall. And St. John's College wins both Hauteng and the overall. Um, so well done, St. John's. You guys are double champions for the second year in a row in the high school age groups. Um, so everyone else, uh, you know, that should be some motivation. And St. John's, you should, now you're being chased, so that should also be some motivation. Um, and I think we're now moving on to our individual winners. So, Sel, would you like to Perfect. take the middle yeah. one? Yeah. No. Thank you so much, John. Awesome. So now to the top 10 of the middle primary winning learners. So, yeah, I think it's just so exciting that we've now expanded from just Gauteng to South Africa and to have some, some other African countries that are interested in, in it as well. Um, you know, we're just developing that problem-solving culture in Africa, which is wonderful to be a spirit um, leader of that. Okay, so from Mitswawi um, Primary School, the notable Kuntal 2 learner, we've got Ramutlo Mateti. Then another notable Kuntal 2 learner from Mount Primary School, we've got Morwat Sechla Rosna. And then another one, Sabona Ne Mhoro. Very well done. All right, now in 10th place in Gauteng from Red Hill School, we've got Ayan Fernando. In ninth place, Gauteng and 10th overall, we've got Keegan Butler from Large School Tigerport. In eighth place, Gauteng, and ninth overall, we've got Mayan Smith from Smith Homeschool. Very good homeschoolers. In seventh place, Gauteng. And eighth overall, we've got Matt Paranov, Panarov from King David Sanson. In sixth place, Gauteng. And seventh overall, from Large School Tigerport, we've got Jan Hendrik Jordan. Then in fifth place, Gauteng. And sixth overall, we've got Jaden Lee from St. John's Creek. In fourth place, Gauteng, and fifth overall, we've got Corvus Fester from Law School Tiger Point. Good going. Then in third place, Gauteng, and fourth overall, we've got Tisha Shavi Rai from British International College. Then second in Gauteng, and third overall, we've got Matthew Stoff from Red Hill. Second overall from Orient Islamic School, we've got Saeed Merka. Very good. And first overall and first in Gauteng, hailing from Red Hill, we've got Nicholas Schmidt. Very well done, middle primary learners. 
um, should still be presenting. Yeah, um, I should say something about the color scheme of the medals. Um, the winner, the first place is typically a gold. The next three, um, so second, third, and fourth, get silvers, and five through ten to get bronzes. Now, those are the numbers one, three, and six, which are triangular numbers, so the top, they kind of become tetrahedral numbers. And if you don't know about tetrahedral numbers, uh, they're very interesting and you should go read about them. So that's just an extra to add. So moving on to upper primary winners, we've got Nanda Platki from Akwabi Primary School. Um, Akwabi had a lot of very good learners. Um, so also, Isis for Joseph from Akwabi is a notable Quintal II learner, as is Yolanda. Kunella and Mathabo Songolo. I hope I'm pronouncing everyone's name right. In 10th place in Hauteng, Aidan Gorolski, King David Santon. Ninth place in Hauteng, Nicholas Morel, St. John's Prep. Dean Bauer from St. Cillian's Boys Prep, eighth in Hauteng. Itan Greenblatt from King David Linksfield, seventh in Hauteng. Matia Wadi uh, from Kingsmead was sixth in Hauteng and the best girl in Hauteng. Morgan Henderson from Sweet Valley was the best girl overall. Um, Riley Elliott from St. Cillian's Boys Prep was fifth in Hauteng. Daniel Markman from King David Santon was third in Hauteng and tenth overall. Uh, tied with Adrian de Kooning from JP Boys Prep. And I should mention that on, if there's a tie on the final round, we go to the first round to break it. And these guys were tied on both, so you both get third instead of someone being in fourth. Uh, Matthew Griffin from Sweet Valley is ninth overall. Matthew Oerstesen, also from Sweet Valley, eighth. Sebastian Sear from Phil's Math Club, seventh overall. Jared Montjoy from Rand Park Ridge is number two in Hauteng and sixth overall. Kyle Cropman from De La Salle, Holy Cross College, uh, first in Hauteng, best proofs in Hauteng and fifth overall. You'll recall on your final exam, those last two questions, we had to actually you know, write out proofs. Um, those are, we take the top mark on those and there's an award for it. Warwick Wilson from Sweet Valley Primary, fourth overall. Eli Williams, also from Sweet Valley, third overall. David Wilson from Wilson Homeschool, second overall. And Yuk Yam King from Kenridge Primary School in Cape Town was first overall. His older brother is also a medalist. Um, so, uh, so, over to you. Awesome. Let's do the junior secondary prizes now. So notable Kunsal one learner from Jordan Secondary School, we've got Kulesa Mbuli. Another from Toleka Secondary School, we've got Promise Nyati. And also from Toleka Secondary School, we've got Hope Banda. Very much well done. In 10th place in Gauteng from Trinity House, Rand Park Ridge, We've got Caleb Johnson. Then in ninth place, Gauteng from Beaulieu College, we've got Michaela um, Covenden. In eighth place, Gauteng from Crawford College, Sandton, we've got Jaden Simanovitz. In seventh place, Gauteng from Kingsmead College, we've got Julia Asperas. In sixth place, Gauteng from Schumann Homeschool. I think this is our third homeschooler. We've got Ruan Schumann. In fifth place, Gauteng from King David Linksfield. We've got Mandy Ru. In fourth place, Gauteng from Smith Homeschool. We've got Joshua Smith. In third place, Gauteng. And tenth overall, very well done to Amber Asboas from Kingsmead. 
In second place, Gauteng, and ninth overall from Trinity has Rand Park Ridge. Well done to Ryan Donald. Very good. So lovely to see some Gauteng people in the top 10 here. In eighth place overall from Paul's Maths Club, uh, Simon Wersthaisen. Well done. In seventh place overall from Bishops, we've got Daniel Fletcher. In sixth place overall from Falls Math Club, we've got Chai Wan Yi. In fifth place overall from Bishops, we've got Aidan Herbertson. In fourth place overall from St. John's College, well done to Alex Song. Also first in Gauteng. Sorry. Also first in Gauteng, well done Alex. In third place overall from Corporate College, La Lucia. We've got Lanbo Chow. In second place overall from Redham House, uh, Durbanville, we've got So Yon Lee. And the winner, congratulations also from Redham House, Durbanville, Ming Yum Kim. Congratulations, guys. Yep. So congrats to um, both Kim brothers on winning. Um, there were a lot of homeschools. Um, I don't think those are all actually homeschools. What happens is often we'll have a student who wants to write, but their school doesn't want to sign up. So we say, okay, well, have the parents sign up as homeschools, and that's allowed if the school isn't signing up. Now, imagine um, how well those schools would have done if they'd actually signed up, right? <laughs> yeah, so if, if you're a school that didn't sign up, um, well, you wouldn't be here, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, signing, you know, pressuring schools is um, always good. I should also mention that the school awards are achieved by the algorithm of take your top five ranks. So if you have a person who came 10th, 20th, 30th, 40th, and 50th, you'd add those up, you'd get 150, and you get a score of 150, and it's like golf in that low scores win. Um, so that that is just how the algorithm works. If you have less than five, we feel, well, that's not really a team. So yeah, anyway. So moving on to senior secondary learners, um, that's grades 10 to 12. Lucky Langa from Quedzizwe Secondary School, notable Quintal 2 learner, congrats. Dan Yong Park from the American International School was the top lady in Hauteng. Amit Ozdemir from Horizon International was 10th in Hauteng. Jun Ten from St. John's College, 9th in Hauteng. Robert Ellison, uh, last year's overall winner, was 8th in Hauteng this year. Um, Cassie Pelsa from the University of Pretoria, C. in Corba, 6th in ha uh, 7th in Hauteng, sorry. Joel Haggis from the Dutch School. Um, Johannesburg, 6th and half ten and 10th overall. Philemon Chikasa, also from Quidilswe Secondary School, 5th and half ten, 9th overall, and a notable Quintal 2 learner. Um, so, yeah, that was really quite exceptional. Andrew Williams from Crawford College, Lucia, 8th overall. Juliet Rowe from Herschel Girls, 7th place plus Best lady of all. Juliet was also a honorable mention at the IMO this year. John mm. Wright from Phil's Math Club, sixth overall. John was a bronze medalist for South Africa at IMO. Leo Huan um, from Crawford Pretoria is fourth in Hauteng and fifth overall. Brent Butka from King David Victory Park was third in Hauteng and fourth overall. Michael Drickmere from University of Pretoria, C. N. Corba, second in Hauteng and third overall. Emmanuel Rousseau from South African College High School, um, second overall. He was another honorable mention at, the inter at IMO, which is the International Maths Olympiad. And Kehelo Bopape, um, first place and best proofs in both Hauteng and overall. From Horizon, um, Kehelo was a bronze medalist at IMO this year. Um, okay, uh, yeah, um, I guess we move on to undergraduates now. 
Sure. Oh, um, you take that. All right. So one of the things that um, we, we really concentrated when we started this competition is we wanted a competition that um, incorporated both the undergraduates who, you know, there's not that many competitions that undergraduates can do um, just to keep their problem solving spirits alive and also to introduce um, kids from grade four upwards to written proofs um, because there's lots of competitions that have multiple choice. Um, but writing proofs is very, very important in this whole game. So the undergraduate winning st um, students, so we've got Sonali Baga from the University of Pretoria, 10th and Class 10. John, could you do oh, the next slide? Sorry, sorry, <laughs> Thanks. Blank. 9th and Class 10 from the University of Pretoria, we've got Patrick Kinsey. In 8th place, Class and 10th overall, we've got Caleb Sindhi from the University of Pretoria. Well done, University of Pretoria. <laughs> in seventh place, Gauteng, and ninth overall, also from the University of Pretoria, we've got Kevin, Kevin Marbach from the University of Pretoria as well, sixth, and the best lady in Gauteng. Eighth and best lady overall, we've got Masha Janeng Mokwena from the University of Pretoria. Then seventh place overall from Stellenbosch University, we've got Nicholas Sander. Then you've got from the University of the Witwatersrand, but Prating and sixth overall, we've got Malwanda Nkonyane. Fourth place in Prating and fifth overall from the British International College, we've got Rupam Gosh. Um, and I should mention that I, I've definitely come across Rupan's name in all of the maths competitions. So it's awesome that he can continue to um, participate in the undergraduate level. So, um, so Rupam is actually still in high school. Uh, the rule on those competitions, if you come in the top 10 in one year, you can ah. compete up division the next year. So Rupam came in the top 10 as a grade 10. And both this year and last year, he won a university award. Wow, well done to Rupam, that's an incredible. Um, then third place in Gauteng and fourth overall from the University of Pretoria, we've got James Murray Lowe. Then from the University of the Witwatersrand, second and best proofs Gauteng and third and best proofs overall. So obviously with the best proofs from the University of the Witwatersrand, we've got Michael Boykman. And then first and best groups, Gauteng, second and best groups overall, you've got Andy Q from St. John's College. So I take it that's another person who's moved yeah, up a, Andy a level. Andy is a, another high schooler who got top 10 in grade 10, grade 11 decided to still compete as a high schooler and now in grade 12 has moved up to university and won a medal there too. Wow. And then first and best groups overall, we've got from Stellenbosch University, Ralph McDougall. Well done to all of you guys. Yeah, and so Michael, Andy and Ralph all got the same score for the proof. So they all get that award. Congrats guys. Um, that's uh, where we end the, um, the actual um, list of prize winners in all oh, the regular ones. Um, there are a couple of special awards I did not uh, put on the slideshow and should have. Uh, firstly, you know, we had some schools which were, um, well, some groups that are not schools that enter. Um, and, you know, some of these are sort of the same corporate centers which train people, or um, Phil's Math Club, which is fairly similar in that it's someone who's training people for Olympiads. Um, these are not individual schools though, so we can't give them a school award. Uh, nonetheless, for exceptional work, um, we award prizes to Phil's Maths Club, to um, EMS and to University of Pretoria C and Corp because they really did push and um, do very well. We've also got two service awards. Um, 
which go to Kogginster and Flinder, sorry, Flinder Lawe. Um, they're two honors students in mathematics who did computer science up to third year, and you know we needed to put this competition online this year. So they coded it up, and you know it worked. Um, you all went through the, you know, most of you did do the online option. Um, and yeah, congrats to them, and thank you very much for all the help. Um, I think I'm going to stop presenting. Uh, now, we have um, a word from Sharp, who's a sponsor and is giving, um, well, we'll be awarding a lot of you winners calculators, which will come with the medals. Uh, so, Tal, over to you. Thanks so much, John. I appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Um, we just wanted to say we are so excited to be part of this competition this year. Um, it's so exciting to see all of you guys who are doing such amazing math stuff. Um, I'm actually currently sitting in the dark so uh, because <laughs> we need better engineers and we need engineers who can do maths and can fix the problem with the lights. <laughs> um, but yes, what we have awarded to you guys today is a W506 um, and a W535 for the junior learners. And both of these are new sharp calculators. They have absolutely amazing functions. Um, so for the high school guys, uh, W506 has matrices uh, with up to four by four matrices. Um, it's really, really easy to use uh, to find your inverses and all of those sorts of things. It's got complex numbers. It's got 52 different physical constants. It's got 44 conversions. It's a fun calculator to play with. Um, and on our Maths at Shop YouTube channel, you can go and watch and learn how to use it if you're looking for some pointers and some fun things to do. And then for the junior side of things with W535, it's got 422 functions and an unlimited table, which means that you can do things like financial maths, um, you can find points on a sign graph. Uh, so there's lots of really amazing things. Um, and it also has a highest common factor and lowest common multiple function as well. So if you do have any questions, um, you can go visit our website, uh, which is www.mathsatshop.co.za and send them through to me. I'll help you with your calculator questions. I don't think I can help you with maths because I think you might be smarter than me. Um, but that's you can always help me answer maths questions. Uh, if you are looking for some maths worksheets to practice, you can also download from Maths at Shop. All of the worksheets, all of the exam papers are free, but I'm pretty sure you also don't need those. Um, so, But yes, if in the future, and if you know any friends who need some help, it's a great resource to go to. And hopefully we'll see you again next year. Thanks for having me, John. Thanks, Tal. Um, yeah, um, and I guess um, lastly, I'd like to hand you over to the head of Maths at Fits, um, Prof Elizabeth Young, uh, to say the farewell. Thank you, John. Well, first of all, thank you to all the participants because without you, no competition. And then congratulations to all the winners. Um, thank you also to the speakers who told us about their love for mathematics and why mathematics is important to them. And um, they also asked you guys or some of you guys to continue with mathematics. And I really hope that some of you will. Teachers and parents play an important role. So for you also, thank you very much. Your enthusiasm means a lot to the students. John, I can't thank you enough. You have this competition rolling um, from all the WhatsApps, never ending WhatsApps. You, you have virtual meetings with the committee setting the paper and so forth and so forth. You are doing a great job, John. And I really hope that this competition will go on for a long time at this. I am very impressed with what you are doing. And then also some of our um, 
people involved in the competition from scratch is actually Belinda and Celeste and Musa and Grain. And then later on, more people joined. I know Pravesh is now also very involved, plus Pinda and Carl, who helped with um, the software so that this competition was possible. And then um, even the people doing the finances for us and helping us to, um, to get in, well, some, to order some of the stuff that we need. And then I must not forget Sharp. They are playing an important role and it was good to hear that they are also very excited to be part of, of it all. Nikon Bele, thank you very much also for your input. And I'm sure I don't have all the names here, but in terms of the people who are sitting the papers, Lee, Graham, Belinda, Kinsey, Margot, Joff, Margaret, Musa, Katie, um, Nikki, Andrew, Hussein, and Clint, and John, if I left somebody out, please pick up from here. And <clears throat> so that at the end of the day, we don't leave out anybody who really made this competition possible. Thanks a million. Um, thank, thanks, Prof. Junk. Um, yeah, I, that was very thorough. Uh, if we're leaving anyone out, we sincerely apologize and, you know, um, please don't be upset with us, but do send us a, a note email so that we can apologize. Um, and yeah, um, I guess that's um, the evening. Thanks to everyone for coming and congrats again to all the winners, uh, their parents, the teachers. Um, if you have not gotten hold of me yet, uh, please do let me know how to get your awards to you. Um, we sort of just ordered them today, so they might take a couple of weeks before I can start dropping them off. Um, but, you know, once we have them, I'd like to send them off as soon as possible. So please let me know all the detail, uh, how to get them to you if you haven't already. Thanks. And I think that concludes the session. Um, just, just one last thing. A big thank you to our sponsors also especially the Faculty of Science and the Faculty of Engineering and the Faculty of Law and Commerce. Um, yeah, good catch. We really do need those people to run it. And it's, you know, you do mathematics, um, either to do mathematics or to go and do stuff in those faculties. Um, it's sort of, well, this competition in part is here to support those faculties. Um, so yeah, uh, it's you know sort of the general effort. Um, so yeah, uh, sorry for leaving them out, and um, thanks, Prof. Junk, for bringing them back in. Yeah, and uh, hope to see everyone back here next year um, for twenty twenty one WMC.